It was a cool autumn evening on the island of Sodor. The sun was just beginning to set, the engines were finishing their work and returning to their sheds. And a thick fog began to roll in. James had just finished his last train and was heading down the main line for home. He and his driver could hardly see a thing through the fog. As such, they didn't immediately notice that the points were directed to an old, unused track. Oh bother! What silly things points are! I don't even recognize this line! Calm down, James, said his driver. We'll go back and set it right. Well, good. Honestly, why doesn't the Fat Controller just get rid of these dis... Everything okay, James? Asked the fireman. But as James came to a stop, his crew saw what made him pause. On the side of the line sat an old scrap engine, rusted and forgotten. It was cut mid sagittal clean straight through without a fault. It nearly made James sick. What sick weirdo would scrap an engine like that? Asked the fireman. No idea, replied the driver. I, I, I don't want to find out. He can get me out of here! At Titmouth Sheds, the engines all stared at James. He was unusually quiet and looked very pale. If I didn't know any better, which is quite rare, I'd say poor little James has seen a ghost. <laughs> well, I did see something. What was it? <laughs> has Gator come back to scare you again? I, uh, I saw a scrapped engine. That's it? I understand it is rather stressing to see these poor souls, but you've seen them plenty of time, James, and never looked this shocked about it. James finally looked up from his buffers. Well, this one... This one was different. And he told the others all about what he saw. Everyone went silent now. Even Gordon. Have you regretted teasing James? Thomas broke the silence. You must have seen the victim of the half engine. Oh, har, har, har. I don't need any of your teasing tonight, Thomas. I'm not teasing. I know exactly why that engine was cut like that. Edward, who had known Thomas for far longer, recognized he was being serious. Go on then, Thomas. Tell us. Thomas took a deep breath and began. A long time ago, before the Northwestern Railway was an established company, there was an engine who was brought in to help build the railway, along with myself and others. This engine was... different. Something very horrible went wrong with her construction. She only had half of a face, the other half being her smoke box door. We could barely understand what she was trying to say. Maintenance on her was a nightmare to watch and listen to. And through all of this, she was in immense, excruciating pain. Her cries and wails for the pain to go away was so horrid, me and the other engines could hardly stomach it. But the nastiest of us, and even some of the crews, thought it a great joke. This would all boil up inside of her, and one day, she changed for the worse. Her behavior became more violent. She would berate even the ones who felt pity for her. 
snarling and growling in anger like a wild animal. To make matters worse, she would always venture out of the sheds and down a heavily forest line, coming back and talking of nothing but how we will all perish in her garbled, barely identifiable speech. Some of us, myself included, began to believe she had become possessed in all her suffering, seeking any way to rid of her deformity. Eventually, the fat controller at the time had enough and ordered an engine to take her away to be scrapped. At that same time, me and another engine were heading home from work. As we made our way down the line, we could see smoke coming from the same direction as the scrapyard and the sounds of the fire engines. We rushed to see what had happened. And it's a sight that I'll never truly forget. Her spirit is still around. Everyone at the sheds were deeply disturbed by Thomas's story. Except Gordon. Puh! You all truly believe in little Thomas's story? James, what you saw was likely not as strange as you think. The fog could have made you think it was cut so strangely. Gordon, I'm serious. The half engine is all too real. <laughs> of course she is, just like every other tale you've told. And with that, Gordon went into his shed to sleep. And one by one, all the other engines followed suit. But they found it very hard to sleep that night, in fear that the half engine was around. The next night, Gordon was making his way home with some empty coaches after his last express train of the day. Once again, the fog rolled in, and it was thicker than the night before. But Gordon continued on, and although he didn't believe in the half engine, Thomas's story still ran through his mind. Thomas has always been a cheeky little trickster. Just then, they saw a red signal. Gordon slowly came to a stop. He was very confused. That's weird. No one should be passing us at this time, said his driver. He, the guard and the fireman decided to walk to the next signal box to see if everything was okay. As time passed, Gordon felt more and more uneasy. Gordon, are you okay? You have to tell us what happened. <laughs> Thomas was right! He stammered as he shivered in fear, his eyes closed shut, refusing to move. The guard went to inspect the train, and nearly dropped his lantern in fright. The first express coach was torn in half, cut clean through without a fault. Gordon finally opened his eyes, 
and when he looked back, he was beyond surprised. Now, how did this happen? Questioned the fireman. The driver and guard were both confused as well. Gordon, can you tell us what happened? No. Gordon replied softly. His crew respectfully leaving it at that. All of the crew simply put it off as faulty construction. But Gordon knew exactly what had happened. He remained silent as he was uncoupled from his coaches and was brought home, unsure on how to tell anyone what he had witnessed. He felt sorry for teasing James. He felt sorry for not believing in Thomas, and more importantly, he felt sorry for denying the existence of the half engine.